Steve is a big Newcastle fan. Another Steve. Steve, good morning. Morning. Um, yeah, I've been a Newcastle fan and a season ticket holder for the last 10 years. I've got to say, Simon, awful. Um, just because you were connected with Crystal Palace and you're on a, a radio talk show doesn't make you um, an, an expert, and certainly in the football and, and within the North East, and I'll tell you why. Craig, Craig didn't get any, a word in edgeways there. Um, he spoke for the first nine minutes, by the way, Steve. Yeah, whatever. Well, that's but the same thing, isn't honestly, it? Yeah, but, it, but you didn't... On you go, it, on you go Steve. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, yeah, so Bruce Bruce has had a bust up with um, you know with, with some of the squad, and that's not the first time we've heard that this season. We heard that a few weeks ago with Lascelles, and uh, whether that's true or not. But, but no, I live literally 600 metres from the training ground, and you want to see the signs that are put up there. Okay, you get that with any club when they're not happy with the manager, but some of them are hilarious because we just look at the games that we've been playing. So early, earlier this season, we saw we saw him take off. You know, he was playing Andy Carroll up front who puts in a really good shift for Newcastle, he always does, OK? Yeah, his goal tally isn't great, but he puts himself about. And then halfway through the game, we would take him off and then put on two wingers who can cross the ball. I just don't get it. You know, and, and you know, those sort of decisions, when we look at that, we just think, right, OK, I, I don't actually think he knows what he's doing. He is losing the dressing room. Um, we know there's a problem with the owner because, you know, I, I've had the season ticket since my cash has been in post. And it's been depressing because we know he doesn't want to invest that much. His his interest, he's actually, sometimes he doesn't even know we're playing. I'm quite sure of it. Um, he, he's got no one should probably know that. But if you put that to one side, Newcastle fans do not expect Champions League football. We just want to see an effort on the pitch. But when you start making decisions like that, like he does, and then falling out with his... He, and we know that he's falling out with his... Um, uh, you know, the new coach and stuff like that. Because you can just tell with the body language on the side of the pitch, they're not a team. I think he feels threatened by Graham Jones being there, the coach, um, and I'm sure other, I'm sure other um, fans do as well. So, as far as his management is concerned, yes, there's player, there's, there are training ground bus stops. Yeah, we're going to get that quite a lot. Yeah, um, any team gets that. But where we are in the league now, you need the team to be together. And if you're going to keep chopping and changing the team um, uh, and leaking reports about because you can't manage the team, you should just go up to Darren and say, right, okay, we're going to replace you. Um, this okay, Steve. This game. Listen, many and points in there, mate, and I appreciate you coming on and uh, and and saying your bit as we do because we've invited you on and you've done that. John's another Newcastle fan. John, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. What's your take on all of this? Just part of the circus. The circus continues, really. Um, yeah. What What I'm wanting Simon to know is nobody's getting to the facts here. Um, the fact of the matter is taken away all this, we've won two games out of 17, not the facts. Um, the excuses that Bruce is coming out with are unreal. Only people who follow Newcastle every week, watch all the press conferences, realise exactly what's going on. It's basically, you see, he used the excuse every single week. Oh, we've never had Maximum, Almiron and Wilson together. Um, we've never played Fraser and Maximum together. I remember when he was Fraser was playing, Maximum would come on, he would take Fraser straight off. I mean, the excuses are unbelievable. Like, we played Man U the other week, and Joe Linton got injured, and he was like, how are we going to replace a big player like Joe Linton, when a few months ago he says he couldn't hit the ball on door? Right, I right. Mean, the, the, the excuses are just unbelievable from the man. Are you, are you more uh, uptight, John, that it appears that the club is leaking, that, that stories get out, something like Craig Hope's picking up in them, it, it, you know, there's a lot of whispering going on, and it develops into a back page leading three pages inside a newspaper? It's, everybody knows what's going on at the club. I mean, th this isn't the first one. There's rumours of them having a riff with young local lads, apparently. There was a ding-dong with, with, with a few of the local lads, and they had a few home truths about Bruce. Uh, about Bruce, this has mm. happened about Richie. Mm. I just think it's in disarray, mate. And the guy is literally blinkered. He's deluded, and he's not the man for the job. And then in terms of Benitez, not all Newcastle fans want Benitez. The only thing Benitez offered was hope. His style of football was appalling. I, I remember our games against Man City, where we played five at the back. We could have been four down after five minutes. Benitez wasn't the man for me. He didn't play the right type of football, but he got the football club and he stood up to Ashley. That's why he went. And if that's obviously why he lost his job, because he wasn't a yes man.
But that is the reason. I mean, listen, when I speak about Newcastle, it's not because I have an overindulgence of interest in Newcastle. It's because a subject comes up on a radio show and I can either be a mute or I can have an opinion. Given exactly. The, given the fact that I employed Steve Bruce, I know Steve Bruce. Given the fact that I owned a Premier League football club and I understand certain aspects of it, given the fact that your former owner was a very close friend of mine, I spent time around Newcastle. I know some of the players. And I look at it and I try to give a balanced point of view. I don't think Steve Bruce has done a brilliant job but I don't think he was ever given the opportunity to get out of the gates with a great deal of support. And what you tend to do on a radio show is you listen to the vociferous guys that turn around and say negative, 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 negative. And what I try to do is give balance. I think the players are in part responsible. I don't think the playing squad is good enough, but I think the overriding aspect is that the owner is the biggest problem in this football club because irrespective of whether I think Mike Ashley runs his football club badly or runs it well, the fans don't want him there. So whichever appointment that he makes is going to be viewed in a certain way, unless that appointment, and the reasons why I bring Benitez into the equation, not because I have a, you know, a hang-up with Benitez, it's because he's the one manager that Newcastle fans often advance as someone they hold up highly. But the real reason is because he went against Ashley. And people don't seem to think that that's a fair observation. They seem to think that's a, a, you know, a biased southerner with a pious point of view about what's happening in Newcastle. I've seen your football over the last sort of six to eight weeks really improve you haven't got the results but the actual play i mean i watched you against wolves last week and i thought you were really really good yeah yeah so i'll just ask you a question yeah, yeah. obviously you owned a football club yep. if you had a manager in charge it went tits up to be fair yep. um, for a lot of the time and he said after 18 months he's going to do it his way i mean what way was he doing it before? I mean, would you not ask him, well, what way were you doing it before? You well, I think, he what, I think what Steve did there, if you want me to be honest about it, because I spoke to him, is I think he acquiesced to the public pressure of how they were playing. And I think, he mis I think he was wrong to say that. I think he has been doing it his way. I think he's been insulating certain players that perhaps don't have the legs to play it a certain way. And has now decided to give it an all-in sort of, all-in, might as well go all-in and play on the front foot. Now, whether he should have done that earlier in the game. But if I was the owner of Newcastle, I'd ask myself, Am I as committed to making sure that my manager has all the tools to do the job? Yeah. If I'm not, my manager is being thrown under the bus, whoever that manager is. And the only one that doesn't get thrown under the bus is the guy that goes against me. And that was the guy, Benitez. And that's why I bring Benitez back to the equation, because I think he's disingenuous. Not because I don't think he's a good manager. And I also believe that if Steve Bruce takes this side down or puts Newcastle in the championship, he deserves to be sacked. I think he would, I think he would deserve to be barracked for losing to Sheffield United and barracked for losing that cup quarterfinal against Brentford. I think that's fair, fair game. But some of the players you've got there are really poor. But, but, but how much of this can be laid at Ashley's door, though? Simon, come on. All of it. All of it. Yeah, I mean, there's well, John, think, who's but, obviously but we're, we're, a, a we're, we're, passionate we're, we're Newcastle agreeing, fan. John, aren't we? I think Mike, whatever he is and whatever he isn't, I never knew why he bought the football club. I never knew why he stood on the terraces in a Newcastle United shirt. I never knew why he went over to Dubai and drank beer and tried to sell the football club to, 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 to Middle Eastern owners and then didn't do it. I never knew why Mike's done the things he's done. But he has. And whoever that comes along with Mike and doesn't appear, appears to be an Ashley acolyte is going to cop it. Bruce is a decent manager. No, he's not the greatest manager in the world, but neither is Newcastle United the greatest job in the world, besides the Newcastle United fans. The fact is, Simon, if the fans were allowed back in, would Steve Bruce still be in charge if we added supporters at every match? Well, he's, Ashley's pretty resilient, isn't he? I mean, he's not going to acquiesce to you guys because he hasn't in the last 13 years. He don't care, does he? He gets on with what he's doing because with the, with, with the best one in the world, and you're not like to hear this, you're background noise. Yeah, but I think obviously it doesn't make it right. By the way, I'm not saying that's right, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, listener, thank you. Seriously, we, we we know where you're coming from. We we know there is angst in that part of the world right now, and we understand it. Um, uh, we'll see what happens this weekend. But there's angst at the moment, Simon. If they lose to West Brom, there'll be real angst. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I know. for sure.